Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Go Tigers 247's Film Room. I'm your host, Christian Fowler, and joining me, as always, is former Memphis offensive lineman Gabe Cohn. Back after a week off. Glad to be back. Feels like forever. It does. It feels really, like a long time since was, we did the SMU game. Yeah, I was, I was coming over to do this, and I was like, dang, it feels like it's been forever, but glad to be back. Another big win for Memphis. Uh, what was the score? 45-27. 20? 45-27. 18-point win over, yeah. uh, over a conference. They opponent. covered. They covered. Great teams cover. That's what I heard. Yeah. Don't know if that's the truth. Good teams win, great teams cover. Hey, that's how they say the saying goes. But anyway, Gabe, takeaways mm-hmm. from the game, what do you um, think? I would like to see the defense get started a little quicker. They, you saw it in the Navy game. They they sort of get to a point where the first half they come out slow, um, and then the second half the adjustments hit, and they basically give up nothing. You would like to see that start from the beginning. Brady White continued his just He's awesome. absolutely. He's awesome. Sorry. He's been incredible. And, and you know, all the jokes about – Jokes aside about, oh, where are all the Brady Brady White haters now? It's like, no, at this point, if you hate Brady White and you're you tripping. think he's a bad quarterback, I mean, you're you're gone. We've I've, I've had my things to say about it, and at this point, there's nothing you can say anymore. He is absolutely on point. He's making reads at a very high level, and he's playing quarterback at a really high level. Absolutely, and the offense, I feel like the offense has played at a, at a relatively high level all year. But the past, what, four or five weeks, it's just been completely different. Yeah. You've, you've had Antonio Gibson obviously come on in a big way. Uh, Calvin Austin's had a couple big games. Congrats on the scholarship to Calvin yeah, Austin as well. That yeah, is that's, so awesome. It's always awesome to see that. Uh, so Calvin Austin played played his way into a, into a scholarship, which is great to see. Uh, Kenny Gainwell still rolling. Patrick Taylor comes back. Uh, just the whole offense is is loaded. And weapons on weapons on weapons, and you're going to continue see the continue to see them roll. Absolutely, yeah. And and Patrick Taylor, five carries, 14 yards. That was it. Pitch count. You know who's right. on a pitch count. I think I think going forward, you're going to see him in situational uh, sort sort of spots, whether it's four minute offense, trying to trying to run out some clock, um, trying to eat up. You know, some some rushing yards, trying to get after that other team and, and sort of impose their will. He'll he'll be in in those positions, but I still think Kenny Gainwell will be the lead and feature back for this team. Absolutely, and like you said, he was knocking some of the rust off on a bit of a pitch count. Got five carries. Obviously, we expect more than that, but still, Kenny Gainwell should be the lead back. Patrick Taylor should come in if they're trying to impose their will. If they're trying to wear a team down, he's perfect for that. Yep. It's a great change of pace. I think they comp- complement each other well. We haven't got to see it yet necessarily, but I think if you just look at the running styles that the two have, uh, that it's going to work out very well. And when Brady White's this confident and oh. playing at this high of a level, it doesn't really matter who's in the backfield. It just matters that Brady White is playing that well. Absolutely. And these, and these playmakers have continued to show up week after week. It seems like a new guy every week. This week, everybody got involved, um, and, and it was really fun to watch sort of that offense come together in Houston. Ready to get into it? Let's do it. You sure? 100%. All right, be, man. It's going to be fun. All right, let's do it. I have no problem. Hit me with that awkward stare. Yeah, of course I do. I love it. Uh, this is what I was saying. Start of the game, they were very. they started off very slow. What you're going to see here, they have a two cover two shell, which means they have two high safeties. But the safety up here on the hash dives down. Um, I don't know what the responsibility was necessarily. But Marquez Stevenson is a good player. Definitely. And and what you'll see here is they run a climb route. He gets out of the pocket. and One-on-one the, one with the safety. In the one high safety, Andre Thomas here, I mean, he has no help. Right. So when he gets it to Marquez Stevenson, who is a good player, and he misses the tackle, it's off to the races. I yep. mean, there's there's just nothing you can do after that. I, I just think it was a scheme thing, and, and, and in part, you got to make that tackle. Yeah, and we can call it what it is. Clayton Toon's not a very good quarterback, and what he wants to do is get out of the pocket because it makes his progression easier. Yep. He's better outside of the pocket. He doesn't have to worry about guys in his face. So if you let that happen, he does have a big arm. I'm not saying yeah. he doesn't have a big arm. He's just not a great quarterback. <laughs> so if you let him get out of the pocket, he can make those throws, and that's what they wanted to do, and that's what Memphis allowed them to do early in the game. Yeah, and you saw – Sort of building confidence. Right. Dana Holgerson thought he had them in that first quarter, but you'll see later that, that they sort of tightened up and, and got this done. Dana but, Holgerson needs a haircut, by the way. What hair? He got to do hair something. Does, what hair can he cut? Got to do something, man. It's rough. But yeah, they, they came down and they drove immediately and got another TD to tie this thing up. Kenny Gainwell right here. This is a power scheme, which you don't see a lot of a, uh, a power scheme out of a Mike Norvell offense. You'll see Dylan Parham, the left guard, pull around. He's He's skipping around to get this linebacker here on the hash. 
And this and, is this is new. We haven't seen them run these tosses out of a shotgun yet, which, I mean, I feel like they add new wrinkles every week, and you can when your yeah. offense is this good. So to see them continue adding wrinkles this late in the season, I think is definitely a positive. And then this is what I love about Kenny Gainwell. It's just the instinctual it's, movement. It like it, That spin, you have to – that can't be pre-planned. That has no. to be right on the spot. You know what you're going to be doing. He tries to move back inside. It's just impressive to see. But would you believe me right here if I told you that this is a read? Brady could keep I'm, this. Yeah, because I see that defensive so end So he's reading number 31 right here. If 31 dives like he does, he pitches it to Kenny, and that's what happens here. But if he went and tried to latch on to Kenny, he could keep it and run right. up the middle. Uh, given the circumstances. Man, just stick that foot in the ground. That's It's just... And the thing is, they've been scheming for him. Yeah. And you've, you 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 don't see the 200-yard games, but the 99-yard game, the 85-yard games. Right. But, like, I mean, he's still at a good, you know, average. And, and that's all you want to see. And something that we've talked about a lot, me and you, is that Daryl Henderson was a home run hitter, but could he get it done if he was getting 15 to 20 carries a game and having to grind it out? Well, Kenny Gamewell showing that it's not just home run hits. He can eat up the six, seven, eight-yard runs and then break them off. And that is what a running back is because every play is not a 50-yard touchdown. Yeah, and you, and you thought going into the year that Patrick Taylor was going to be the body blows guy. Right. You never could have imagined that Kenny Gainwell could be a guy that takes it 17 to 20 times a game and still can do something with it. Right. Which has been absolutely crazy. Second goal here. This you, is You were impressed by this. I'm impressed by this because it's not an easy look. And it's only a five-yard pass. I right. get that. But what you'll see here is everybody sort of manned up here. Um, 39 here on the sort of second and goal thing right here on the on the five. Latches onto the running back as well as this inside linebacker. But Brady knows that. And, right. it, and it sort of looks like this inside linebacker will latch on to Cameron Wilson here, but he doesn't. And he throws this ball when it looks like he's being covered. Right. Anticipation throws. It's what, I mean, good quarterbacks make anticipation throws. And it, it's just easy. And Cameron Wilson, all he catches is touchdowns. That's all he does, man. Touchdown machine. I mean, when you're 6'7 in the red zone, is the perfect place for you. Let's go back. I don't to, know what to say, man. Yeah, let's I mean, go let's, back to some more bad defense. Ugh, this is this is the worst play of the game. Definitely. And then they finally tightened it up. I have a, I have a feeling Coach Fuller got, in, got into oh. him after this one. This is not okay. You can't no. let a quarterback run. What is this? 68 yards. 68 yards on a on a quarterback draw. It's no. just not okay. They bring four. Um and then I get he has one blocker out in front, but you have so much space and opportunity to go cut this guy down. Right. Um the linebacker, I believe this is JJ Russell, and this is Laundre Thomas. They just sort of get beat. Laundre actually gets cut off here by the ref, you'll see. A little bit of a block by the but ref. But I, I think what happened here is they underestimated his speed and his athleticism. Oh, because he's rolling. Oh, he's rolling. And then Chris Claybrooks gets a chance, um, but he's not able to make it. But you, you can't underestimate. This is what this guy wants to do. He's, he doesn't like throwing. No, not at all. He makes mistakes when he throws the ball, but if you let him run the ball and get out of the pocket, he can, he can make some plays. A 68-yard QB draw. That's, that that's you not what you draw up. <laughs> no, like, no, that's not how you no. play defense. So that was ugly, but they they tightened up. Right. And right here, this is this is more Brady White's brilliance these past four weeks than even you know Coxie running her out, catching it, getting upfield. Right. Because what you'll see here is Houston actually gets to him. They sort of land this up top. He steps up. Last and then year, he, that's a sack. Yeah, he steps up and then he rolls over here and. Calmly throws it and dumps it down to not, his check not down. Not freaking out. He's not dumps freaking it, out. Exactly. Dumps it down to his check down. And then Coxie does the rest. I will give him his credit for doing this, running down the sideline and rolling for a touchdown. I mean, that's that's good stuff. But Brady being able to keep his composure, Move get the around. ball off on a second and eight, keep him ahead of the chains, regardless of if he was tackled right there or got the touchdown, this is a great play. Right. And I think there's two things that we heard – all of last year and half of this year was that he can't he has no mobility in the pocket and he can't throw the ball down the field. Yep. The throwing the ball down the field came a few weeks ago and now you start to see the mobility in the pocket. And we'll coming. see one later that I really appreciated. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. And then Zay Collins, I, I you know, Austin Hall being out was definitely a concern right. going into the game. But Zay Collins is a great player. Yeah. Zay Collins can fill that void and I think I think he did it at a high level this game. He led the team in tackles at nine. Uh, six solos, so I, I think he really stepped up in, in a big position here. 
Yeah, it's been a lot of situational for him this year, you know, coming in on first, second down, or third down, or whatever, but this game, he really played the majority of the game, and he played very well. This right here, just reading, ducking under that, I yeah. believe that's the this is a This is a really stupid play, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> They're running a counter, and there's three guys here for one blocker because they pick off this tackle right. at the top of the screen. Um, but, yeah, there's three guys. He just ducks under and makes the tackle really easily. Um, but that's a good job to get him down and be sure with it. And he did. This cracked me up. He didn't really know what to do for the celebration. He, he Check it out. He gets a. Uh, <laughs> he didn't know what to do. Not much of a celebration, yeah, but it yeah, works. He wanted to, though. You can tell he wanted to. Yeah. And this is the the very next play. This is a big possession because they hold they hold Houston to a field goal in this possession. And these two plays are the reason why that it wasn't 24 to 14. So what they do, they have one extra guy out here. Um, and they bring a six man blitz. And that's in. Clayton Tude's head is spinning. He doesn't know what to do. Um, and they land it. It's only a five-man protection. They bring a six-man blitz, and it confuses him. Because he doesn't know how to throw. No. So when he has to read really quickly, get the ball out, and he's under pressure, it just looks ugly. And that's what you saw here. Yeah, we haven't seen a ton of blitzes from Memphis this year, but I think a game... Again, I don't even want, I don't I don't think Clayton Toon's an inexperienced quarterback because he played a lot of last year, the majority of last year and this year. But just a quarterback that's not very good at making reads, not yeah. very good against the rush. I think bringing the blitz was was it, perfect for this game. Absolutely, Adam Fuller definitely saw that and he exposed it. And I think you know moving forward, they're probably when you look at the two guys they're going to go against in Jordan McLeod next year, not a lot or next next year next week. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, South Florida and then Desmond Ritter. They're two guys that like to run a little bit they can't throw very well right they're not very good through their progression so i think we'll see some more Pressure. blitzes dialed up in these next two weeks so we saw some demonte coxie strength this is what this, about what about this Antonio this is very similar this is very similar to that smu play oh I mean, yeah I mean, the run so, just chunking people off left so and right. they just a little bubble and yeah and the thing is if you're gonna tell mike norvell and brady white hey We'll give you a one-on-one -on -one with Antonio Gibson or any of his playmakers for that matter. Coxie, Kadarian Jones, Kenneth Gainwell. If you give them a one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to take advantage, and you'll see this here. Takes Man. off inside, strength, strength, strength. What's that, four people? Four people in the Four dust. people, four people, and then a fifth. Watch this. Shake. Fifth, gone. And now speed. It would have been awesome if he finished <laughs> It would have. But still, but I mean, good there too. This, I mean, he, is, this is incredible. The combination of strength, speed, Route running ability that he has is scary because this, because he's still raw. I mean, you got to yeah, think he didn't play much last year. He didn't really start playing much until Pop Williams went out against South Alabama. So he's still really raw, but he makes big plays on a consistent basis. This is my favorite thing. It's just the foot in the ground. Stick the foot and in the ground. Thirty two has zero chance. I mean, what are you gonna do? He's too strong to take him down from behind. That's four people. It looks like there's just bodies on the ground. Let's review like one, two, three, four. Somebody should get five. a tackle there. Somebody should get like, a It's there. impossible. He makes it so hard on the other team. And just and he's what? The second or third guy in line? Right. Like it's it, the amount of playmakers on this team is, is uncanny. It is. It's incredible. And then here, this is this Hey, a, this Brady a, Brady White. This is a thing of beauty. A runner. <laughs> Where is everybody on this play, by the way? <laughs> they bring a blitz, and he steps. Uh, this is awesome. They bring, what is it, six men. Man, yeah, man coverage. All, all the DBs' backs are going to be turned. But they bring six men and a five-man protection. He knows he's hot, yeah. and he knows he doesn't have a hot route. Right. In the past, he Taking would he would sprint back. I don't know, take a sack, fumble it, you yeah. know, whatever it may be. We saw it in uh, the Navy game when he made that just inexplicable play when he was yeah. hot. But this calmly steps up, avoids the runs rushing. out of the pocket, and takes it for a 14-yard touchdown. Yep. It's just smart. I mean, because any the, any quarterback knows if you have cover one with the blitz, all the DB's backs are going to be turned to you. So if you can duck that defense in, get your shoulder on him, which he did. He didn't just try to step up. He actually ducked his shoulder under him and then knew that nobody was going to see him running or expect him to run for that I'll, matter. I'll ask you, though. What do you think the biggest difference has been with Brady White? I mean, it's confidence. confidence. And, and, and that's what you see in that play. I'll run it back real quick. Is you see the fact that he realizes, okay, I'm hot. I'm either going to take the sack or get out of here. And he ends up getting out of it because he stays calm and he's confident in what he's doing. Yeah. And that's just, man, he it, has come a long way. It's fun to watch. It really is fun to watch because, I mean, we talked about it the first couple of episodes. It's like, 
because I mean, obviously, you know him. You know him pretty well. I mean, he's mm-hmm. such a he's a great person. Yeah, Honest he's a good guy. Dude. Like really Brady good. White's an incredible person. And to see him progress and to start to feel the love from the city instead yes. of you know this guy sucks and we need instead to back of the booze instead yeah. of the, all the all the negative comments, he has absolutely continued to develop and continued to do him through everything. Yeah, and you could see a lot of kids, a lot a lot of dudes in his position fold, fold under that pressure. Absolutely, and he hasn't, and he has not. Not at all. Somebody else came along. We talked about at the top. Calvin Austin's been really good this year when given chances. Oh, my gosh. And this is just a sort of wheel route here. And, again, confidence in Brady White. He would not have thrown this ball no way. six weeks ago. No he way. He would not because there's a safety coming over top. He's throwing to Calvin Austin, who's not an overly tall guy. Not at all. Great catch. Gets great a foot throw. Down. Gets a foot down. I think the DB sort of whiffed, a little, whiffed a little bit, and he wasn't expecting it. And I, I don't blame him because the confidence you have to have, the cojones you have to have to throw this ball, or are, are, are something different. And he doesn't just throw it like that. Is the only it's, a zip. it's the only place it can be. And also, he's on the run. And right. It's a zipped ball. Like it's it, for all those people saying his arm's not there. I don't think it's like an exceptionally strong arm. Right. But he gets it he, there on a, on a, in a hurry at times. He gets it there. Now this is just a this is we talk about that being ball placement, not as much as this. This is really good. You have just Calvin Austin out. on an out and up, and he knows number three here with the long hair. He's like, I'm gonna pick on this guy. Yeah. Calvin Austin runs track. Let me throw this up. But you have a safety coming over top, and he still throws it. And look at this ball. It, I mean, it's best perfect. Place. Like, how is three going to make that play? How is 33 going to make that play? It's impossible. That's just a really good ball. And then to be able to, in your, I don't know, third, what is it? His fourth or fifth game, Calvin Austin, right? Some, yeah. Really Four, playing. Yeah, really since playing. the two lane game. Yeah. Since the two lane game. Yeah. To go up and catch that and get a foot down, almost two feet down. We'll see in, in, in the replay here. Almost definitely one, almost two. Yeah, didn't quite get the second one down, but, but still, I mean, this is this is something that's unstoppable when you get a quarterback getting the ball to his playmakers at, at a high level. Just good stuff. Perfect, Great. Great perfect. Stuff. I mean, when you say perfect placement, <laughs> that's I mean, that's the only that's that. the only place you can put it. The only place you can put it. And then this Thomas Pickens stepped up this little year coming too. out party, right? Yeah, and they liked this blitz. They really liked this blitz. They dropped off JoJo Dorcius here on the hash and they bring Thomas Pickett's from the top of the screen and they try to block him with a tight end whiffs too much developing here in the yeah. back and yeah like, I mean you see what they're trying to do they're trying to they're trying to throw a little trickery out there you'd think typically with something like that it'd be a screen but it wasn't uh, but I don't really know what they were uh, working here it that's what I would think is, is a if, screen? It, yeah, because if you see that, you would think that running back would be going out for a screen or the receiver, and it just it's definitely not a screen. They're trying to push the ball downfield on a two-man route. It just it, The play design, honestly, isn't great. And, and then Marquez Stevenson's your best receiver, and you have two guys out in a round right. that aren't him. Right. So it yeah. doesn't make sense. But also, I, I'd like to point out, this is a four-man rush into a max protection. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in, in protection. this protection, and there's only four guys coming. And guess what? It lands. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, when you look at it, he blitzes from depth, and it's smart because you have a tight end over there, and the tight end's immediately going to think, I'm going to help on this defensive end and not look for the blitz because it's a tight end. He's not a left tackle. Yeah. So he tries to help on the defensive end, leaves Thomas Pickens, sees him last second, can't get there because Thomas Pickens comes He's quick fast. off the edge, and that's what you see. You see him You'll suck see, in to go help. This is angle for it. He sucks in to go help. It's not there. Thomas Pickens comes. He can't get there. It's a sack. It's a good, little good flex on him, yeah. A little flex. Okay. And now here – I don't know how many times, like, how many times we say this against SMU? Stop pressing DeMonte Coxie. Stop doing it. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. He's, he's too at physical. the top of the screen he's too here. Physical. And you just cannot do it. He's too physical. You're too little. I don't care what corner you put on him. Yeah. If, the only way I'll accept it is if you have a 6 4 corner out there and you don't have it. No right. one in this entire country Conference. has that even. Yeah. So what he does here beats the press with speed. Of all, like that's the thing is like he doesn't even have to use his physicality. He can beat you with speed, and then he just goes up, and he's stronger than you. And this is this is what we talked we talked about this so much in the SMU game with the back shoulders. And I know this isn't technically a, a back shoulder. It's it's similar to all a back Brady has to throw. do is throw it toward him. It's confidence. He knows he knows if Demonte's got one on one, he can trust him to go up and get it. And that's exactly <laughs> what he does. And that dude had no shot. I love how thirty three is trying to take him down and can't even after the play. <laughs> 
And Monte's just physical. He stepped, stepped out. Stepped out of it. Yeah. Physical. This is but like all you have to do if you're Brady White is just throw it up, give him a shot. Put it in his area code because he's got a what is that a five nine? I mean he's a whole yeah, freaking head no taller than him. Way. You literally see his helmet over the but top again, of his. If you're in the American conference, stop pressing this guy. He's too physical and he's too fast. He's athletic. He can do everything he wants to against you if you're gonna press him. Too many weapons to cover. So they think they can try to press Demonte Coxie. Doesn't um, make much sense. Antonio Gibson out of the backfield. I've come to like this. Yeah, he's a, he's a little bit of an athlete. He's I think. Li- he's lined up here on the the right hash, and all they do is just that's, sort that's of, two big fellas in the backfield. Him and Patrick yeah, Taylor. Yeah, little play action, and all you gotta do is dump it out to him. Look at Kadarius. Like, w- rewind a little bit. Watch, yeah, watch, it's a pick. It's but, a it's a pick, but he doesn't touch. Yeah, him. he doesn't touch. He him. doesn't touch him. They're actually natural they're, pick. Well, they, yeah, and they're also a yard from the line of scrimmage, which you can have contact within a yard. And he just kind of sucks up under it, waits, and makes that linebacker go under him. It's smart. It's great play design. It works perfectly. Yeah, and, and you know, getting the play action sort of action here, it's going to suck up some of these linebackers toward the play. And he's too late. 24 is way too late. Like, yeah. you, you and number cannot. Th- number three had no idea. You cannot going. redirect and go cover Antonio Gibson. It's no. not possible. He's too fast. He's too strong. Right. So all you got to do is dump it here, and then he goes Air Gibson on us. There it is. Got to love it. Got it. Yeah. And then he reaches out. I, I bet Norvell got on him for that. You don't, don't want to reach out. You don't want to reach out. He pulled it back, back quick. Back well, yeah. I mean, he pulls it back really quick. Yeah, but that that's another great angle on Kadarian Jones. Uh, good yeah, job, he, good job by Coxie, by the way, getting this block out here. He doesn't get this block. It's going to be harder I'm for him. I'm pretty sure he didn't up. even score on the stretch out. I think he scored yeah, on the he scored roll. On the, roll <laughs> the stretch yeah. out didn't do anything there. Um, remember that blitz we talked about? This is the exact same one. Same thing. Same exact thing. And he absolutely drilled him. This yeah, time. Oh, he took him out this time. So you'll see Everett Cunningham here at the bottom of the screen, number five. I like Drop that. off. Last time it was JoJo. Right. And you'll see he drops off. Four-man rush. This time they have a five-man protection, but no one is accounted for Thomas Pickens. And if you're Clayton Toon, how do you not feel that? Because he's not a good quarterback. <laughs> I mean, that's my only response. Ugh. Good quarterbacks feel pressure in the Because you know he's, he felt it last second. Oh, he oh, felt God. it there. He, he saw it last and second. Then, and, and then we'll see at this other angle, he does punch it out. He went straight for the ball, which is which is definitely a good defensive play. Shout out to OB. He got his first ever fumble recovery. Really? Yep. That's surprising. That's what they said on the broadcast. Could okay. be wrong. Didn't go fact check, but that is what they said on the broadcast. Here, we're going to see the other angle. He punches this out with his left hand. You'll see here, right. Right there with his left hand. Straight really ball. good job. Clayton Toon didn't feel it, and that's just a good dialed up blitz at a good time. Executed perfectly, and, this and he is, had no idea where the ball was. No, and this is right when Memphis was Memphis's offense was really rolling. So this was yeah. a huge play in the game, and that swings it out of oh yeah proportion. They have no chance. You to get it in plus that. territory at the thirty yard line, and this yep. is what happens. Yep. <laughs> this is what happens again. What did I say the last time they went don't, to Coxie? Don't, Stop pre- don't press him. the 6'3", 220-pound receiver. Stop it. With the 5'8 corner. Stop it. He's down here on the 30, and they're pressing him again, and he beats him with speed. And what do you know? They throw it over top. The safety doesn't get there in time, and it's a touchdown. Stop pressing him. Don't press him, but good. I mean, when I was watching this live, the only thing I could think about was – the body control angle Let's and concentration it takes. I think there's I think there's a front side angle on it, but the body control. The lean back. Oh, there. dude, it's it's incredible. Like it just it's just awareness, just knowing where the ball is, seeing where the ball is, and going and getting it because that's not easy. Tracking the ball as a wide receiver is not easy at all. He sees it, lays back for it over the top of the corner, and scores. And six got his head around, tried to do everything, but again. You're too little, man. Yeah, I don't care. How they're all they're all a head shorter than him. I, I don't care. It's it, you see it with like Michael Thomas in the NFL. He doesn't necessarily get super open, but he'll catch everything you throw to right. him. Right, and that's sort of what Coxie does. Is like he's not necessarily getting these huge separations, but he is catching the ball when you throw it to him. You just got to give him a chance, and he'll go make a play. Yeah, and that's why you got to love the aggressiveness. And I think that's a, a the Michael Thomas example is really good because. That's what he does. He doesn't. He's never gotten a ton of separation. That was the biggest thing about him last year that people said is, you know, he doesn't get separation. Memphis doesn't really have another receiver. But now that they do have some other receivers, it's paying off. It, it works because you get one-on-ones with a 6'3", 220-pound receiver. That's what happens. Yeah, and you, I just don't understand the thought process of trying to press a guy who's 6'4", 225 pounds. I will never get it. Um, but eventually you have to do something. I guess is the thought process of some of these defenses they've been going against. They have to throw a wrinkle at them. They have to try something new, but it's just not going to work. There's too many, you know, weapons on the field. 
And, and, and the Tigers are going to get what they want until someone tries to do something different. Right. All right, Gabe, so we've recapped the 18-point win. It was another big win. It was one we yep. talked about that could end up being a trap game, and Memphis definitely took care of business, especially later in the game. Now they go on the road again, which – very unassuming game. Yeah, the road games have concerned me, and I, that's why I was so concerned about Houston because they were terrible on the road at the beginning of the year. Uh-huh. But with the way Brady White played on the road, the way that he's played the last few weeks, the way the offense is rolling, how do you feel about the USF game? I feel good. I feel just how I did about the Houston game. I still think there's there's things about it that freak me out. The fact you have to go on the road, it's not going to be an emotional crowd. Um, they play in a pro stadium. There's going to be no one. Nobody. I mean, no one there. Uh, that team is playing for bowl eligibility at this point. If they lose one more, they have no chance. Right. Um, but in the end of the day, they suck on offense. I was yeah. just I, I'm gonna Not plain good. up, put it out there. They've done a little better since they replaced Blake Barnett with Jordan McLeod. But at the same time, he's a guy who likes to run, get out of the pocket. His throwing ability is not there. He's Not a young guy. Um, I, I think defensively they're all right, but the way this offense, this Memphis offense is rolling, I, it's just hard to imagine them getting stopped. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. USF's defense has played decently well yeah. this year. I mean, especially, especially when you look at what's in the American as far as defense goes. It's not known for being a defensive conference, which is why offenses win in this mm. conference. Good offenses sure win in the American, and USF doesn't have one. I don't think they, they really don't have an identity. Uh, they want to run the football, but they're not very good at it. Yeah. Uh, they can't really throw the ball because their quarterback is not a true passer, uh, which kind of brings up the question, why is Blake Barnett not good? I don't know. He's just not very good. He was okay at the beginning of last year, but he did get hit and, hidden by some really bad teams. Yeah. Um, they played Georgia Tech. They ended up beating BYU this year, which was sort of an outlier. I don't think BYU is that bad of a team. but Played since it closed. Overall, this South Florida team – doesn't quite have an identity. Charlie Strong may be on his way out. They don't know. There's a lot of things about this program that are very in question. Um, so so that that traveling there will be a, a different type of game, but I think that the Tigers could handle business fairly easily. Yeah, it just goes back to coming in prepared, being yep. ready, not looking forward. I think they I, I think that Tulsa game taught them a lot. Yes. I think it taught them that they cannot look forward. It opened their eyes. Yeah, it's it, it told them that they weren't invincible, that you can yep. go on the road and drop a game to a bad team. And they cannot, if they want to go to the Cotton Bowl, they cannot afford to drop a game. They they honestly can't. Yep. But the way, you know, you got teams like Boise State, and I know Appalachian State hasn't been as impressive as late. Uh, but if you want to go to a New Year's Six Bowl, you want to play a big-time team in a big-time game, yep. you got to win. And you got to take care of business in the easy games. I think they should be able to, like you said, their offense is is rolling right now. Their defense, I think, is. I, I think their defense could be helped by USF's lack of offense. Yeah, and I, it's so weird with Memphis's defense because the beginning of the year they were incredible. They had some lulls, and then it's just like second half they can play well in the yeah. second half. If you, if you look at basically the majority of the game, you look at Navy. Um, Temple they played well in the second yep. half. So it's just like if you look at the majority of games yep. this year. You, you sort of want to see, instead of second half adjustments, you want to see them sort of pre-adjusted before the game, right? Um, Jordan McLeod, their quarterback for USF, Jordan Cronkrite, they can beat you one way, okay? They like running the ball. They yeah. can't throw the ball. So this defense is going to be able to lock in on what that team likes to do. You don't want to see the lulls you saw in the first half against Houston. I even think Clayton Toon is a better quarterback yeah. than what they're going to see this week. Yeah. So they're going to have to make sure to tighten up early and make sure he's not going to get those little crappy plays right. early. No draws that go for 68 yards. No you know, uh, plays that sort of get out of the pocket and they're sort of... Missed assignments yeah. and weird matchups. Yeah. And they've struggled against running quarterback. I mean, look at Justin McMillan. That's another yeah. That's another game where they started slow with the first couple of drives against Tulane. So you look at Justin McMillan, Clayton Toon, they've struggled a little bit of, against running quarterbacks, but it's like they tend to figure it out a little bit. And I think they a tighten lot, up and say, oh. Yeah, and a lot of that has to do with, well, when your offense is scoring that many points, teams really can't run the football as much anymore. So yeah. it, it's, it's a bit odd on the defensive side of the ball. It's definitely better than it has been. Mm-hmm. It's definitely better than in years past. Um, but I just feel like this defense – over these next few weeks has to take a step forward if they yes. really, really they, want to make a difference. If they really want to go win some big-time football games, beat a team like Cincinnati and maybe go to a Cotton Bowl or, or play in a big-time game like that, this defense has to be better. They absolutely have to. And it's it's weird because 
it's like when they make a big play or the offense makes a big play, that's kind of what kickstarts them. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they have to do that from the beginning of games. Yes. They have to come out kickstarted from the beginning of games. It can't take, uh, you know, a big tackle for loss or a big touchdown from the offense to get this defense rolling. They have to go from the beginning, and this is the perfect game to do so. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for games like this where you go on the road, and I know it sounds cliche, but – the Tigers are the only team that can get in their own way. Absolutely. Right? The other teams are not as good. They're not as talented. So what they need to do, the key to this game, is to start fast and don't let off the pedal. I guess toward the end of the game, when you get tired, when you're up by 30, that's okay. Yeah. But they need to start fast, and they need to put their foot on the throat really quick yeah. and show USF that they don't belong on the field with Absolutely. Well, with that being said, Gabe, I think that basically wraps us up for tonight. Make sure to head over to GoTigers247.com. Check out everything we got over there. Football, basketball season have collided, so we are definitely in full swing right now. What are you averaging, like 400 articles a week? (laughs) It feels like it. Um, Also, make sure to go check out Gabe's podcast, the TKT podcast. Does it with his brother, Alex. As I've told you every week, they cover pretty much everything. I think they both do an incredible job. Very knowledgeable guys. Once again... Gabe's not gonna let you trust his betting advice, so don't. Have you gotten, have you gotten I'm, better? I'm a little better. I was three and zero last week. I was two and one the week before. So we're getting there. But yeah, stay away. Stay away. Maybe trust it a little bit. Maybe you'll get lucky. Yeah. But anyway, that wraps it up for us. We'll be back next week to break down USF.